Willem Kosini Klebisa is onlangs verkies as president van die Enkata Vrijheidspartij. Hy sluit nou by my aan. Mr. Klebisa, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, and the viewers of this program in this evening. So the viewers are mostly Afrikaans. And in a recent speech, you said that you want to make the IFP a political home for Afrikaners, for Trozas, for Pedis, for Vendas, for Ndebeles, Chwanas, Sutus, and Zulus. IFP has been seen as a Zulu party for most of its existence. How will you achieve this broader church? On Friday, I'm in Pretoria. <clears throat> I'm sure you will recall the IFP once had a member of parliament, Mr. Kors van der Meve. He invited me to a lunch with a group of African speaking people to engage them and also ensure them as that the IFP is a home for all citizens of our country. And in the, in the IFP, we already have the African speaking people, which is a demonstration. Liesel van der Meve, the member of the National Assembly, is an African speaking person. Which of the issues that are important to the Afrikaans community at the moment are you going to talk to these voters about on, on Friday? What do you think really matters to them now? I'm going there on invitation by them. So I firstly need to listen to them when they raise the key critical issues in our country. Uh, our country, everyone is aware that is collapsing in terms of economy. The unemployment is rising, which affects everyone who is a citizen. The breaking down of law, crime is a concern for everybody, irrespective of which color or which language a person speaks. The issue of crime is a critical matter. Some of these voters, Ms. Labisa, might argue that this uncertainty about expropriation without compensation <clears throat> is one of the reasons why the economy is currently struggling. Now, the IFP has taken a firm position on the Ingonyama Trust land in KZN that that land might, must not be touched. Does the party oppose all expropriation without compensation, or is your focus on this Ingonyama Trust land? No, no, no. The IFP is clear that throughout the country. The expropriation without compensation is not a cause to go. We believe that whenever there will be an expropriation, there must be an appropriate compensation because if you don't do that, you will hit the economy, which is actually in a collapsing stage. Now, the situation in KZN, the king there has said that if indeed the Nkonyama Trust land would be touched, there would be serious consequences. And President Ramaphosa last year uh, backed off a little bit and said, OK, he can enter into, into conversations there. Are you, are you confident uh, that that land, um, that the status of that land will remain unchanged? Or do you think that uh, a long uh, political battle still remains to keep that land in, in, in Zulu hands? No, we, we believe in engaging the state because <clears throat> one of the problems that was done by the commission by Halema Mutlante and the second one by Dr. Mathlati, they never consulted the first person who is a writer of the act, Prince Mangusu Tuptelis. Because when you want to change something and you have a fortune that the writer is still alive, that is your first entry in terms of consultation. They even did not consult the traditional institution, including His Majesty the King. And even the people who are residing in the Ngoyama Trust, I am one of them. I know better the advantages of the current situation than if you want to change it and introduce the title deed, which will make many people, once they have the title deed, being unemployed, they will sell the land and eventually become landless. Mr. Lebisa, you mentioned Prince Putlezi here. Now, he was party leader for a very long time, and now you are his successor, um, but he remains in a new position which was created, that of President Emeritus. How much power and influence will Prince Putlezi still have in a party which he led for such a long time? Granting a person the status of President Emeritus is a national, international norm. When you have someone who has expressed his retirement intentions, but you know he adds value, you grant him or her that status. There are two specific things. One which we, we, we requested him to do is the issue of social cohesion, 
to ensure that the relations between races in our country improved and become even far better than what it is. And secondly, is the issue of reconciliation. You know, there was violence between the IFP and the ANC. That chapter needs to be closed. He is the only surviving senior leader who know the founders of the ANC, Prixlaik, Sagaseme, Inkosil Tuli, all of them. And the ANC doesn't have that person except him. That is why we said there are national issues which we must handle. He's not involved on the daily today basis in the running of the party. W which issues, very briefly, will you be focusing on as the next election approaches? The first one is unity and solidarity within the party. Most political parties are affected by factions. I want to consolidate unity and solidarity as pillars for strength. The second thing is to champion the fight for the protection of women and children. As you could see, women are raped day in, day out. The IFP is going to lead a campaign to protect the powerless component in our society. And the third thing, we will be ensuring that we consolidate Wazulu Natal as our base, move to Gauteng as I'm here in Gauteng, and expand our power base to all other provinces of South Africa because we will only be able to influence meaningfully at a national level once we have expanded our, our base sufficiently across the country. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to have this interview. Thank you so much. Now, time for the part of Tensi's place, please, and